Hi, welcome back to Hey everybody. Coffee and One Thing. And we are caffeinated and, and motivated. motivated. And hydrated. <laughs> and hydrated for Scott. <laughs> um, so here's what we've got for us today. We've got our guest Sarah Perkins. Yay. She's from Lawyer's Title. Um, this is one of our favorite title folks. And she's going to kind of walk us through what is title, why is it important, mm -hmm. and some of the things that are detailed into what's going on with title. So um, with all of that, um, we do have one little extra piece that we want to talk about. Take it away for your favorite coffee, because we are coffee and yeah. one thing. <laughs> coffee and one thing. So this month we're featuring the Donut Shop Regular Coffee, the original. This is Ken's favorite, and Ken is Elaine's <laughs> sweetheart. So, good coffee if you need some caffeination in the morning. That's right. And they're recyclable K-Cups, which I always that's like to look thing. for. That's a so, good thing, for sure. That's our coffee. That's our coffee. All right, so now we're going to take it up with Sarah. So talk to us, Sarah. Um, you know, I, we get a lot of questions about what is going on with title. How, why do I have to open up title? What is opening up title? Um, what is all, title? What is title? Like, there's all these different things that people just don't understand. And so um, let's give some information. Let's talk to our, client, our clients and our viewers and let them know what's going on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to be here and um, talk about title insurance. And... We know title is not the most exciting thing when it comes to real estate, but it is one of the most important things when you're in a real estate transaction, mm -hmm. particularly, well, anybody in any situation, but particularly if there's been some confusion on what maybe a previous owner did to the property. And what I mean by that is, uh, so I'll, basically I'll back up. What title insurance does is it protects a new buyer, doesn't have to be a new home, just a new to new them. Order. Exactly, okay. a new owner, that when they go and buy the property, we as a title company ensure that they have clear title. And what that means is that no one in the past who once held title in any way, shape, or form, or any type of lien, and I can explain that in a moment, uh, that they can't come in and out of the woodwork and claim, hey, I own half this house. And that goes all the way back 50 years. So it can go back. There's a number of ways exactly mm -hmm. uh, that we go back and look at it. So when you think of like a homeowner's insurance, you get that policy for you to cover kind of forward. You know, anything that could happen in the future once that, you know, the new homeowner lives in the property, anything that happens in the future to the property, they have homeowner's insurance. Title insurance actually insures the past. It okay. doesn't do kind of future. It ends, so to speak, on the day of closing of escrow. It is a one-time fee that a buyer and, you know, there's, it's all negotiable, but there are kind right. of standards on who pays what when it comes to title insurance. Right. And, uh, but it, it ensures mm -hmm. that they, the new buyer owns that property free, not necessarily free and clear. If they come in with a lien, they can put it on. Name. But it's in their name. Anybody that comes out of the woodwork or anybody that says, hey, I have claim to this, to this property. Title company says, no, you don't. We did our homework. But if they, you know, we do our own research and then we pay them kind of their portion to say, okay, you don't own anything. You're going to sign the release and then we cover it. If there's a lien for any certain dollar amount, title company pays it. And so what it kind of comes down to is if you look at it, it is not a super expensive policy to buy. It's a one-time thing, but it can protect against some giant costs that could come down oh, yeah. the road. Yeah. So title insurance is optional unless you're getting a loan and then your lender right. is going to require it. We do recommend it. There have been times when somebody said, hey, I'm going to save a couple hundred bucks and not buy title insurance. And unfortunately, when it comes to the claims and what we pay out, the vast majority of it is fraud. And the vast majority oh. of the perpetrators are people within the real estate industry because they recognize and know how they can work the system. So wow. it can be times we've we've uh, <laughs> turned people into the FBI because mortgage fraud is, you know, kind of real thing. Yeah. felony and it's, yeah. you know, cross state lines with the different mortgage companies. And we've seen it where it was a designated broker owner selling his house. He had sold three properties. His was the last one. He actually was living in it and he was selling the property. He had been paying his paying his, his mortgage, but then he fictitiously filed and, and recorded a release. 
So what happened is the release looked a little weird when we had an open escrow. Our escrow officer called for a payoff. Lo and behold, this house that he owned free and clear had a payoff wow. <laughs> of a couple hundred thousand dollars. He was trying to take the money and run. There was a previous, the, a different title wow. company wow. that had closed the transaction. It was a million dollar file, or he had a million dollar loan with Wells <laughs> Fargo that that title company had to pay off because they had insured clear title for the oh. other. So, you know, for a few hundred dollars, sometimes it can be, you Not know, it's such is, a bad you know, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Than a million dollars. Owner, <laughs> then that can. That, that's on you. Right. Yeah. So but the new owner, when we obtained. can transfer with the property? So, so if that's. If you don't have title insurance? Correct. Oh. That's exactly the case. So if that would you be scary. if you come in and you're like, oh, I'm I trust this person <laughs> without doing their homework, it can get real messy real fast. Wow. And wow. that would be awful. So it's necessary item to get. Absolutely. It's not worth well, and even on a money. new build, I've seen that happen because a new build, if they didn't pay one of their subcontractors, Correct. a subcontractor yeah. can do a, a lien onto that property. So that's also another. Wow. Because yes. I've had a situation like that. We had to go back and clear it off. So we've oh seen God. that a number. I mean, yeah. that that's not an wow. unusual. That would be a lot of added stress that you would not want on top of purchasing. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Wow. And so what we do is we kind of, and this is where it gets. On the boring side, we go back and we just do a lot of research and, you know, see what we can find out. Where Elaine mentioned it could go back 50 years. So if the house sold in the last 15 years and they had title insurance, you know, previously, we can go back to the to the last time of title insurance. So then they continuously have coverage. If it does, if there is, you know, kind of if, if it's nothing been in was family, missed. exactly. Right. But if anything's missed, we still have it. They have a new policy. Everything's clear. And we work with other title companies. And I won't give you kind of the background, but if there are times when we need to get indemnities, things like that, we do work with other title companies. We know how to track things down. It just can take a while. And, okay. you know, for example, so what Elaine was, was referring to with the 50 year thing is we'll look to see if any open liens are 50 years old. If there's an open lien that's 60 years old, we'll kind of, that hasn't been collected, it's kind of easy to say, all right, you know what? It's probably at this point been satisfied, gone away. But we go back 50 years. We, um, Shelly, one of my escrow officers, is working on a file now and <laughs> has a 50-year-old lien. The, the homeowners didn't know about it. No payment has been made for 11 years. So this is where it took a while. We had to do some homework because the company that had originated the loan is gone. So, you know, it's kind oh, of wow. tracking down who has these loans, where can we get these payoffs. So we track it down. Took her about a week to find. She got a payoff. And the thing is, and, and she was like, the payoff was for the principal amount only. It wasn't, there was no compounds, interest, anything. Because they were. Yeah, wow. So you never know what it's, what it's going to come up with. Wow. And that's one of the things, too. When you have these surprise liens that, you know, people don't know about. Right. It is a good thing for the for the lien holder to reach out and say, hey, will you take X amount of dollars? I mean, and it can be anything. We had one. Pennies on the dollar. Exactly. We had wow. one. It was a $73,000 lien because wow. of all these things that had compounded over time. She called, you know, the homeowner called and said, hey, I'll give you three grand. They said, done. They released it. So it's. You know, that's a happy ending. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, because they were just happy to get a couple dollars because it had been so long. So there are ways that people wow. can work with, mm. with uh, different lien holders. But just doing what about their homework. quit claim. <laughs> <laughs> so quit yeah, claim. You hear deeds. that term thrown yeah. around quite a bit. Oh, I'll just do a quick claim. Deed. Right. That touched a nerve. <laughs> so as a non-biased third party, as a title company, and I can talk about what that means in a moment, but um, quick claim deeds we look at as an uninsured deed. And so when we want to make sure that people are signing off, when they're signing off on their you know portion of the house, we've seen quick claim deeds. People do a lot of weird stuff with their houses. Um, Particularly when the market was booming, like in 05, 06. I mean, people were, you know, quit claim deeding an eighth of their quarter percent of this. I mean, and just mapping down all the percentages because wow. people do weird stuff and put everybody on title. And then you have to go get them all to sign off to get off a title. One of the things wow. when it comes to a quit claim deed, we can't, because it is a non-insured deed, usually, you know, if there's title insurance, it's going to be a special warranty deed, a warranty deed, um, things like that. But... 
we have to go back and find those previous sellers to make sure that was indeed what their goal was. They had no title insurance on the sale, so we go back and get them to sign off. If that transaction was in the last year or two, it's not that hard. But now if we start looking at properties that had quit claim deeds, say, 15, 20 years ago, we have to find <laughs> these owners to get them to sign off on a new deed. Now, there are certain ways that you wow. can get around it. It can be case by case, but everything, was, that's when you talk to a title company, you talk to, we talk to our underwriting, mm -hmm. see what we can do. If we can't get them off a title... Then it goes through what's called a quiet title, and that can take months and months to get somebody off a title, and that can be a challenge. So what's the original purpose behind a quick claim? Like, as a t coming from the title perspective, why would you use a quick claim? They're easy. Okay. They're easy. They're simple. They used to be insurable, and they used oh, okay. to have, but they's kind of, they've kind of gone away from it. And it was a lot of, really what happened is when there was so much weirdness, 15, 16 years ago, that's right. when title companies were like, these are not insured claims, we can't work with them, they're just... Too much trouble? Too mu they're just too hard to too, map. Too much liability. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot, okay. lot of liability yeah. and messes. And yeah. So you you guys are kind of the private investigators of real estate. Yes. Title. I like literally, it. I like yeah, it. Literally. Oh, that makes it sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what are things for a buyer or a seller to look for in a title company? So a lot of it um, can depend on the type of transaction. A lot of what we do in you know, Greater Phoenix, we do a lot of just regular plain old houses. They're in subdivisions. Those are pretty easy. When you start getting into what they call meets and bounds, mm -hmm. county islands, going more rural, if you're on septic, well, the you know, all these the different. Of yeah. the, mm -hmm. yeah. So then things get a little <laughs> trickier, and so you want to make sure that any title company you work with, they can handle the type of transaction. Not every title company can handle all transactions or insure on all transactions. Okay. And so there are more often than you would think kind of some weird outliers mm -hmm. that. Well, we have county tenacious. islands. The oh, county yeah, islands. Right, which would right. be a different piece of the pie. Right. Exactly. So it's it's having a title company that can handle the type of transactions. For the most part, the regular, you know, mm -hmm. subdivided, those are pretty pretty easy to do. We just, you know, have to kind of do some research and go hunting and find some yeah. things, but it's all doable. And some title companies I've seen can't do, maybe if it's vacant land or if they're wanting to do uh, seller financing, because there's all different ways that you can, you know, and we do see a lot of seller financing where either if they have a wrap or if they, you know, we don't really see assumptions anymore, but all that fun stuff kind of. So, so you're one of the only title companies that I know that do um, seller transactions. So that's actually kind of an interesting piece too. Um, because cause a lot of times people are like, well, I'll just sell my house myself. Well, um, you're one of the only ones that said, okay, well, we'll take that on because other a lot of people won't take that on. Right. So not all title companies are the same. Exactly. Didn't exactly. That. That's interesting. It's good to know. And anytime and it's weird, always ask, you know, hey, can you guys handle this? If not, you know, so there's, they'll tell you what they can and can't do. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So what would like typical fees be? Like if a buyer, you know, so or seller's fees thinking? do you see, yeah, I guess, like, right? Like, because there are a lot of fees that people, you mention, and they're like, I've never heard of that before. Right. right? Is that what you mean? Right. What so, typical fees are charged, not... Yeah. 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 So there's different structures. We all are regulated by the Department of Financial Institutions. So all of our fees we have to record with the state. It's all public. It's all so we are required to charge based, you know, accordingly. And in Arizona, we combine title and escrow into one company. Most okay. states are actually two separate companies uh -huh. where you go to an escrow company, they do the paperwork. In a lot of states, say I grew up in Chicago or outside of Chicago, Colorado we used attorneys. This way too. Yeah. You know, so it's an attorney and then the title company. So every state is a little different. Honestly, I think it makes it a whole lot easier that we do it all at one yeah. because now it's just less people involved and so yeah, easier there's, to be on the same page right? exactly okay. right. and so i've i've seen it where buyer has an attorney seller has their attorney then there's the you know it's we are one we work with the buyer and the seller and so what we do when we combine title and escrow so there's a fee for the title insurance um and then there's the fee for the escrow the way right. we bill it is there's recording 
title, escrow. There's three fees. Now, there couldn't be additional fees based on the lender, certain endorsements. There are, like you know. mobile notaries, you know, that kind of stuff. Those exactly yeah. can be added on. Some people will lump them and bundle them. Some people have, like, itemized, you know, exactly. And okay. so that's just how they filed with the state. The way we, you know, so when we have an escrow fee, so we have a transaction, and, you know, we basically have our escrow fee, and it's all based on the sales price, and that escrow fee is cut in half. Typical, so I want to just Yeah, it's this. negotiable, typical, but typical. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Negotiable. For example. Exactly, exactly. So buyer and seller, they split escrow fee in half. It's just 50-50. Then typically what happens, the seller actually pays for the buyer's owner's policy, which then, you know, says, okay, buyer, you, you know, we're ensuring you get your clear title. Anytime you get a loan, anytime the borrower gets a loan, they pay for their lender's policy because the lender also re- wants to ensure that, you know, their title. Clear exactly. <laughs> because if they're going to miss out right. on. So there's there's two title insurance policies then if you're getting. In a place loan. when you buy something. Wow. When you're getting a loan. Right. But right. yes. So when you're not getting a loan, you don't buy that policy and you the buyer you just the one. would just pay the escrow fee because the seller typically pays the buyer's. Yeah. owner's policy. Is that all negotiable are, or is it? Yeah. Okay. It, so that's kind of how the contracts are typically written that we see is, you know, kind of check when you're just doing the normal stuff. That right. is exactly how it is. Okay. That's why when people ask, why is the seller's fees a little higher than the buyer's fees? It's because the seller's that. paying yeah. that policy. Right. Okay. We have seen it. Investors quite often, if they're coming in, they pay all the fees and they'll just say, okay. And, it, right. you know, they just, they're like, everything on title comes to us. And, mm-hmm. you know, then our settlement statement is lopsided, but that's what it looks, that's you know. They and well, and sometimes they depending on the market, yeah. right? But it, they, that's covering themselves. That's smart. Exactly. If you're an investor, so right. it makes sense to me. Yeah, making sure mm-hmm. all of the title is clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a big deal. Because there's, like, there's, there's always, you know, like, at least when we're working with sellers, especially sellers they think oh well i just have to pay the commissions for the for the sell and then they're like what do you mean i have to pay all these other fees and so it's kind of a it's always a good conversation to have like prior to actually getting under contract saying okay here's here's kind of how it will play out you know well and as far as your title escrow company like you guys do all of the work as far as getting things recorded getting you know you collect the funds making sure they're in a third party neutral place like you take on quite a bit of a responsibility in helping the transaction and your company is responsible for making sure everyone abides by the guidelines of the contract correct? exactly exactly I mean, that's, they're, they're, they're and, like and a, a mediator in they're, case they're a third a party like they're wonky. disinterested third party they yeah. they are basically just making sure everybody's playing fair <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> which the, the i mean title company the referee maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yes well security and safety yeah. i mean yeah. right i mean we all hear the wild west stories of you know this was my gold mine and somebody yeah. else comes well, in and shoots you yeah. and <laughs> now it's not now it's theirs yeah. so <laughs> prove it with title take, your, right? take your house <laughs> not, oh, yeah, that that's not that wild well, wild west yeah, yet. not anymore <laughs> now we need a paper trail <laughs> So that's a really good way to describe it and explain kind of what we do is so we look at it, the um, we operate on written instruction. That contract is the written instruction, any addendums, any changes, send it all to us. It gives us the guidelines. It tells us, okay, this is what, who's paying what, this is what, you know, kind Mm -hmm. of what, what the game plan is, then why we ask for all kinds of information. So I will, you know, Elaine and I were just actually talking about this with buyers and sellers where, you know, when we ask for social security numbers and things like that, right. people feel like... Uh, and loan numbers. Yeah. And kind they're of like, why do I, why do I have off. to give all this off yeah. to these? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's because we do, we call the lender, we get the payoff. So we coordinate everything that's any moving part when it comes to the municipality, the county, the taxes, right. uh, the lenders on the both HOAs, sides, the but, HOAs, yeah. any, you know... Sometimes student loans that have gone unpaid get recorded against the house. Sometimes, yeah. oh, wow. uh, yeah. uh, I've seen that. that. Yep. 
there's a lot of things that uh, <laughs> will follow people. Child support will it's follow. Fed, it's a federal oh, debt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. They attach yeah. it. And we've we've seen a lot of interesting things. And so, you know, as our escrow officers compile all of this. And as the numbers come in, they kind of build that settlement statement. So then when we come down and say, you know, hey, Mr. Buyer, this is how much you need to come in with. Or, hey, Mr. Seller, this is what your proceeds are going to be and have those conversations. We talk about it all before we everybody signs it. Right. Then it's agreed upon. Realtors are involved as well. And I, and I like your process for that because you do actually sit down and help them through some of yes. that too because I've seen some of these title companies and they're just like, well, at the time of closing is the only time this person has ever seen those numbers. And then, of course, they're freaking out. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah. yeah. What makes our job, well, we always try to help our clients be prepared for those things so it makes our job right. easier when we're right. working in conjunction yeah. with a title company that does that and there's been some recent rule changes that um, because especially when it comes to the loan side where disclosures have to be made in certain ways and some of it in the past had been where realtors don't have the opportunity to look at those numbers ahead of time and they now recently CFPB did change that so now realtors can see the full numbers so then you can again guide your clients right. and say hey have that conversation yeah. double check about things it. make sure everything's right yeah and so that's a big deal the next thing that I want to talk about and I know this is kind of a big one is when you tell somebody go open escrow what does that mean to them <laughs> they have no they're, idea. They, they're no, like, no. I don't know what that is, and and they're like, so what, what does that mean? Me to do? So go, you know, cut a cut a, a check, and it's usually a cashier's check, or they can wire the funds into you. But what what in the background? What is, what is it that they need to know? Why that is important? So why we have to have some time, you know, to yeah. gather everything. So we also are working with the lenders. Lenders need some time to build, you know, the loan. And we need time to do our homework and, you know, do all the research on the property as well as collect all that information from the HOA and, right. uh, you know, right. sellers, lender, things like that. So when they come in open escrow, the way it's officially open and people can email a contract, uh, we can take personal checks when it comes to escrow money or earnest money. Earnest money. earnest money. When they come for the closing costs, can't be personal check. We do accept wires, and we do have now an online option. Anyway, the Ron. Nice. <gasps> yeah, well, that's a, yeah, but even <laughs> just paying and opening escrow online, yeah. so we can do those things. Oh, you can yes. do that. Nice. It's okay. Very cool. That is so, very cool. What happens is the escrow is officially open when we have that earnest deposit. That is what officially turns it on. Uh, we do start getting, you know, some the ball rolling on the research, especially right now our market is moving so fast and people are pre-opening escrow, things like that. But we will start collecting as much as we can immediately because there are certain timelines that that uh, lenders and mm -hmm. HOAs require in order to provide us the information, and those are 10 business days. So things can be sent on a rush, not the lender payoff. Uh, we can just beg and plead and, you know. And that just takes when it takes. It takes when it takes, yeah. exactly. And, and so, that's part of making sure that the seller's loan is properly paid off. Correct. So that they don't have any issues moving forward. Correct. So that's a big piece. It's, it's oh, the yeah. biggest piece, yeah. for right. sure. And people don't often realize that when they get a payoff, it's not just that principal amount. Sometimes the lenders have their final oh, payoff yeah. or collect a little bit here. And so we get that number directly from the lender. Lenders like, this payoff is good through such and such date. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that all gets entered into our numbers as we break everything down. So it's all about just compiling all of that information. It takes a little bit of time. That's what open or escrow is open means is we're doing our homework. Right. And so it's really important to get as much of that information in, especially for the sellers when we, you know, we need their social security number to get a payoff. And so if it takes a couple of weeks to get the, the social security number, then we add another 10 days that the bank is available or is allowed to uh, get back to us. So that's why sometimes we can hear some delays in, in a transaction. It's because everything needs to be gathered in certain timelines. That's and, important. I don't think And all of the that. loans need to be disclosed. I've had a couple of times where <laughs> they, they're like, well, it's my HELOC. I, I, I need that for... No, that that has that to has clear to be off. Paid off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that has to be paid off when yeah. the property transfers title. Yeah. And solar has turned into a big oh, one. Oh, yeah. Those are leases, yeah. and they stay with the house. And so it, originally, 
you couldn't get clear title on a solar on a property with solar. That was, I mean, as little as five six years ago, that was the case. Yeah. Solar is yeah. so much more popular now. We have we work with the Things solar companies yeah. to make it where they basically remove the lien, we close, they put the lien back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you that's something for a consumer, a buyer, or a seller to realize that those things can affect timeline. Yes, absolutely. When you're buying or selling a property. So you have to have time to do those things. Yes. Yeah. And allow for asking for that information a few times. Yeah. Right. Well, this has been amazing. Been very I think that it's yes. like there you could be here for another 20 minutes. Like we just have so much <laughs> to talk true. to you about. It's true. <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you for all thank your time. You, Sarah. Um awesome. You're just sharing our coffee and one thing and having a good time with us. Um, stay tuned for next episode of Team Beeries. Um, dive deeper into our experience of... Of closing fees. Closing We're going to talk fees. about closing fees next. So this whole month is going to be around title and escrow. And so next week we're going to talk about closing fees. Closing fees so. are going to be fun. And then we also um, want to just tell you if you liked any of the information that you see here, make sure you subscribe. Um mm-hmm like our video and um, share it with the people that you know that are buying or selling a house and and let them know that we can help them in any way they need. Send us your questions. Always use a very good team. Bye guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.